Hey everybody and welcome to Libromancy, a podcast about the magic of books. I'm Josh and today we're going I'm going to be discussing Thunderhead, the second book in the Ark of a Scythe series by Neil Schusterman. Now let's compile the magic of books. So, first off, I got to say this book was great. The first bit um had a nice pace to it, had a nice feel, and by the end of it, oh my goodness, things are going on. It's getting crazy on a non scythery not a non spoilery way to say it, but it was intense and amazing. I was fist pumping, I was shaking in my seat at what was going on. I loved it. And you know, as I was writing my notes for this, I actually realized that hey, the arc of a scythe, you know, to, to swing a scythe, you, you you swing it up, and then it kind of hits that sweet spot in the very back, and then you swing it down, and you cut through what you're cutting through, and that's almost what these books feel like to me. They, uh, the, you are starting, you, you're lifting the scythe up in the first, you know, quarter to half, you're, you're kind of setting up all the pieces, you're getting it all ready, and then you just hit this turning point, this kind of where you have it, your scythe at like the highest point, you hit it, click almost and then you just swing and you don't stop moving until you're in the ground until you're you're done and it goes crazy and you know you could almost say that this is also how the the series is playing out that the first book has a whole lot of setup to the second book and the second book is kind of us hitting that swing and starting their swing and then the third i'm it's gonna be crazy i can just tell you that for sure right now so again trying to keep this one a little bit free of spoilers for a few minutes. The book was amazing. That's the characters are great again. They I loved them. I I'm glad we got to see got to see a couple other characters start to grow a little bit more while we're seeing a completion of certain characters that kind of run through that. The atmosphere of course you really can feel it's a very fleshed out, nicely realized world. It's great. The writing continues to be spot on. There are so many one-liners that just make me want to like shout for joy. They just fit so well. Um, I'm gonna talk about a couple of them, but they they fit and they are excellent and they are just brisk, brisk and on point, and they don't deviate from the story while adding so much to it. The plot, it surprises me always how much plot is actually in these books, because by the end of the book, I'm feeling like, man, that was so exhausting. That was so, in a good way, exhausting. That was so long, like so much happened. And then I, I look back and I think, well, that happened, and that happened. And it's like, what? Was there really only like two or three things that really like happened that actually mattered? And this, the answer is yes. There were only two to three things that like really mattered and changed things. And it's like, wow, that is, that's surprising. Like, cause it feels like so much more. So, and of course I enjoyed it. It was, it kept my interest. I was reading it, you know, every time I got a couple chances and the cover art for Thunderhead only improves the cover art from Scythe. It is just amazing. I love it. So I think we're going to have to just get into spoilers for this book series. I am so excited to talk about this. I had a blast. If you haven't read it, I'd stop here and go read it. It's very good. So let's talk about our characters and kind of where we left off. Scythe Anastasia or Citra Terranova, has become a scythe. She is working pretty closely with scythe Marie Curie. They kind of do their gleanings together some days. Scythe Anastasia has a pretty unique way of gleaning people, though. She informs them about 30 days beforehand that she is going to glean them, and then lets them pick the method of their death, and or you know helps them, and then if they leave or try to escape, she has a poison, like a... Uh, she gives them poison that'll kill them in 30 days if they don't meet her first. Scythe Lucifer, otherwise known as Rowan, is running around hunting down the bad scythes, the scythes who take pleasure in murder and not gleaning, and they are in it for the the 
the letter of the law, like we talked about in Scythe versus the spirit of the law. And that is cool. We see him capture one, and then he actually lets one go because he's like, hey, you know, straighten up, and I'll, I will come back. And that was so cool. Um, Tiger is an idiot. Tiger is an idiot. I just... My best friend, who is also a scythe, is telling me that something's wrong, and I just don't believe him. I want to be a scythe. I'm so cool. No, you are just bad. Bad kid. So bad. I feel bad for him, though, in the end, because of of what happened. So, And I loved, I absolutely loved having the Thunderhead as our epigraphs. They were so well written and so amazing. They were always on point. They were relevant. They explained things. It was so good to see that. I loved the Thunder, the Thunderhead's personality because it has a definite personality. And I love the way he wrote about it. It was crazy good. Um, and Grayson Tolliver, who wants nothing more than to be a Nimbus agent and to serve the Thunderhead, but because the Thunderhead can't have any contact with the Scythes, Grayson Tolliver is his workaround. It's like, oh, Grayson, by the way, well, in a roundabout way, of course, it's like, by the way, did you know that there are these two Scythes that are going to get murdered? I can't do anything about it. And if you do anything about it, you'll be kicked out of the training program you're in. And he's like, well, this sucks. Stupid Thunderhead, you know what I'm going to pick. And he goes and saves them by blowing themselves up, by killing himself on their car before they reach the explosives. What Grayson Tolliver, super underrated, super amazing. Let's talk about him for a minute because I just I got to. So he he saves their life. He's kicked out of his program. He's deemed an unsavory, which is a unique concept and pretty cool that people who kind of don't want to follow the rules instead of going to prison, they're just labeled unsavory. They kind of have their own groups. They can go to their own things. But he is labeled an unsavory, and he is basically secretly given an undercover mission. Because his handler is like, uh, yeah, I'm the one who told you about that site that you had to go save. And here I am in the corrections office. Coincidence? So you need to keep doing what you're doing and see why why the Thunderhead has brought you here. And they make up this good backstory and he kind of exaggerates. And he's getting in with these unsavories. And then his his agent is gleaned. And if that wasn't a sign that somebody knows a little bit too much of what's going on, or was it just an accident somehow that Purity was able to get... See, that's that's where I don't think it's the accident, because Purity, it's kind of implied that Purity did it for him, that he was always complaining about his agent, you know, playing up the part, and so Purity had his agent gleaned. Well, Purity's an unsavory. She can't tell somebody to glean that agent, and... So I think she did work with Rand, and then Rand told like Scythe Brahms or whoever to go glean that agent, and it's like, oh no. So then his undercover life becomes his real life, and he is an unsavory, and no one knows anything else because Grayson Tolliver doesn't exist, and the Thunderhead can't talk to him because he's an unsavory. It's That was just like, oh my gosh. And then him going to live with the the Tones and the Tone, tone Cult, and being like, oh, I'm here, and oh my gosh, I I, you know, I keep saying oh my gosh, but like every part of this of his story was was just so like heartbreaking and like amazing though. So then he's he's basically praying to the Thunderhead, like, give me a sign, tell me I haven't been for bit for like forgotten. Like I know that you can't talk to me because I'm an unsavory, and like that's the rule, but like. Tell me, like, show me, like, do something. Let me know that I'm not, like, all alone and I'm not forgotten. And it shuts, the Thunderhead shuts down all the lights to the city for, like, 1.3 seconds and then flickers them and turns them on. And it's like, oh, my gosh. So amazing. So amazing. And then at the very end of the book, right after the Thunderhead screams and produces static on every device ever, like, freaks out, and then it's like, Grayson Tolliver, we need to talk. And it's like, 
oh my gosh, it does remember Grace. And obviously it remembers Grayson, but like it used Grayson's name. It somehow marked him as an unsa- a non unsavory while marking everybody else as an unsavory in the entire world. What is happening? Oh my gosh. So we're going to actually have to go back to Scythe Anastasia and Scythe, Scythe Lucifer's story to figure out the rest of what's going on uh, because, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for Grayson. Oh, and I loved that this is just one line I wanted to put out there that the Thunderhead is talking about the Office of Unsavories to the reader. And he says, yeah, the Office of Unsavory, you know, unsavory people or the unsavories have a need to rail against the system. They just, they have that drive. And he's like, so I created a system for them that works for them. So while they're in my system, they're still like within my system, but they feel like they're revi- they're revolting against the system. And so he, you know, he brings them into the line and they have to sit down away. They have to take a number and you know, he has all these arbitrary things set up that they can hate that, you know, helps them like get out that need to rebel and fight. And then. You know, he's like, and then the other head's like, eh, eventually most of them work their way back to a normal life and live happily ever after. And very, very occasionally do I have to do a memory wipe, and I hate it. And I tell them, and every one of them just thanks me and lives their life the rest of the way. You know, all happy and good for the rest of it. So it's just so good. So let's go back to Scythe Lucifer. Let's do Scythe Lucifer first. He's hunting down the bad Scythes, and then he learns that Scythe Brom, the Scythe he let go... uh, gleaned his father and gave his family immunity and it's like oh scythe scythe rowan please scythe lucifer no don't do it don't go back to his house in anger but of course he does go in anger and he is captured and i really thought that would be the end of it that it was just gonna be torture and killed or like thrown in the the feet of the high council and how it's south anastasia you know, rescue him, but it was so much worse. So much worse. He's taken to Texas, the lawless land. And I'm glad the Thunderhead's doing experiments, but Thunderhead, please don't just let people run wild to do whatever they want. Crazy man, crazy computer, don't you know what people are like? So he has been captured by Scythe Rand. And Scythe Rand. It forces him to fight Tiger over and over again because Tiger is under the crazy delusion that he'll be made a scythe when he gets no training at all other than getting beaten up by Rowan. And he's so... That's why I had to say Tiger is such an idiot because he just ignored all the warning signs and I just... No, bad, bad Tiger. So he is beating Scythe Rand. Or Scythe, excuse me, you... Scythe Rand has captured him and is having him beat Tiger up, basically. And then they come back one day, and Tiger is a little different. And whose head is on Tiger's body? But Scythe Goddard. That was very surprising. I did not believe it. I was like, what the heck? No, he burned to death. Well, obviously, first I was like, Scythe Rand burned to death. I watched them. And then it's like, no, we didn't technically watch them, and... She was able to crawl away and get healed, and the the Thunderhead can't do anything about that because they're scythes, and the Thunderhead has no control over scythes or no connection to scythes at all, which is just a horrible rule that they built into the site the system. Like instead of saying absolutely no contact between the scythes and the Thunderheads, why don't we do like minimal contact or like you just can't solve their problems for them, but you have you can like help them with certain things ah so but how do you tell it who to work for and who's good and who's bad well it can run a thousand simulations so it would know but then goddard is back and he walks in and he is you know able to work and move they were able to save his head and bring it back in texas where there's no cameras and the thunderhead isn't watching as close but secret it is watching as close it's just doesn't have as many cameras and can't really see it is that oh my gosh i just realized something i know now what the third most important conversation the thunderhead was listening to was and it was about the scythedom the island of the scythes i forgot its name i'm sorry but scythe goddard it gets put in the running because he's back he comes back he gets put in the running for the high blade against scythe curie 
and Scythe Carry and Scythe Anastasia are able to stave it off and create an inquest saying, hey, Grand Scythes, uh, he is only 7% Goddard because his head's all that's left. The 93% that's left is this tiger kid and hasn't been trained body and mind, so he's not fit. So they they all go to the, the, the island of the Scythes. There's no gleaning there because obviously it's just Scythes and their families. And that was crazy. They decide that Goddard, yes, he needs to serve a year apprenticeship, and then he can go back to scything. And he freaks out. And, okay, excuse me. He freaks out. He has been beating Scythe Lucifer or Rowan up for quite a while. And Rowan is able to escape because Scythe Rand, who did one good thing, but just so many more bad. Bad Scythe Rand. Bad. She lets him escape because Scythe Goddard refuses her. And I'm like, yes, he's refused you. Like, don't love him anymore. Please, like, realize that he is a horrible person. And and so Rand is, Rowan is able to escape and meets up with Anastasia. He's like, hey, if he loses this thing, this inquest, he is going to do something bad. And he sinks the entire island of all the Scythes basically killing all of the scythes so nobody knows that he isn't fit and of course like that he's crazy to begin with but not to be undone scythe curie starts gleaning the people you know i love that that was it was they have such a weird and a good slash bad relationship with death that when she starts killing people because not just killing people of course but she's gleaning them because it is it is their du- duty to help people achieve get to death and to be comfortable with it and that's kind of what they've been expecting and they're not ready for it to go bad and it's like that totally makes sense like that these people would be happy to get gleaned because that's what they've been prepared for and then all of the scythes self glean except for two Scythe Anastasia and Scythe Lucifer, who were tricked by Scythe Curie and locked into a tomb in a vault. So they're basically in a like hermetically sealed container, and they'll live at the bottom of the ocean. Well, they'll die at the bottom of the ocean, but eventually it will wash up on shore and be found by the Thunderhead, and the Thunderhead will bring them back to life, and they'll be able to hopefully stop Scythe Goddard. But that, I mean... Everything I just said happens in, like, the very end of the book. And the beginning is all set up and payoff. And it works so well. And very quickly, I have to remember, remind everybody, Scythe Faraday is searching for the land of Nod, where they had a clue that this is an island of the Scythes, another island, where if the Scythes fail, I don't remember the quote, I'm so sorry, but you can go there and kind of fix things and I'm kind of excited to see what's going to happen with that and I love that the Thunderhead is like watching them learn this information and the Thunderhead's like oh hey yeah I've never routed anything over this particular spot of land because nothing good is there it's not good to route things over that and he's like wait a minute why have I never noticed this little spot of land and why do I keep trying to forget this spot of land and that it's burning through trying to figure stuff out, and then it kind of does. And I just love this book. Okay, one small thing before I kind of close up. Scythe Beyonce. Uh, get those crappy names out here. Not Scythe Beyonce is not a horrible name, but it was just really funny. And I was like, well, oh, that's funny. That throws me off because everybody else, for the most part, picks scientists or, you know, like great philosophers and such. And Scythe Beyonce. As far as I know, is not a philosopher, but a great singer. So that is going to cover everything I have to talk about. Thunderhead, the second book in the Ark of a Scythe series by Neil Schusterman. It was so good. Thanks, everybody, for listening. You know, Please rate and review this wherever you hear and listen to it. It really helps drive others to it. If you have any questions or comments, you know, email me at libromancypod at gmail.com. And remember to compile the magic of books. <laughs>